Israeli Defense Forces launched hundreds of strikes on Hamas targets over the weekend. And more troops are operating within Gaza's border as the violence shows no sign of letting up. Well, for more on this, let's speak to military analyst and retired Air Vice Marshal Sean Bell. Thank you so much for joining us, Sean. What are the main challenges that Israeli forces will face over the next coming days as they continue their ground invasion? Is there a clear objective here? Is it to retrieve hostages or to eliminate Hamas? Well, good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, Nicola. Yeah, it, 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 when we um, last spoke, um, there was a sort of hope that perhaps Israel was culminating, that the rising casualties in Palestine, of the Palestinian side in Gaza might be, you know, reaching an end game. But uh, on Saturday night, when uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu gave his press conference, it was firebrand. It was clearly talking about the long game. It was clearly talking about solving the Hamas problem for good. And that changes the perspective of the military campaign, because rather than just little raids, little sporadic incursions, what that effectively means is that Prime Minister Netanyahu is in for the long long haul here and probably wants to actually take the whole of Gaza City, potentially hand it back once he's eliminated Hamas from there, back to the Palestinian authorities with some sort of security guarantees. But given that that's probably the strategy now, then what we're going to see day by day is almost certainly tanks uh, encircling Gaza City before the really difficult fighting occurs in that urban environment. And of course, um, the hostages, whilst um, the Israelis do say that the hostage situation is a priority for them. I have to say, from a military perspective, this escalation in military activity doesn't bode well for the safety of the hostages. Sean, great to have you on again. Thank you, my friend. Um, so the ground invasion started, as we know, last week with sort of nightly incursions, and it seems to be gathering pace. And I, I, I find myself, and I'll say it to you, as I said in the last hour, I make no apology, I think the only thing that sensible broadcasters can do in this instance is to report the facts in front of them, be that uh, terrorist attacks, uh, anti-Semitism on the streets of London, a humanitarian disaster in Gaza. Uh, this might seem like a strange question to you, but as a military analyst, you'll be able to answer this better than most. What does victory look like for Netanyahu and the IDF? As much as Hamas are, are there and, and causing all sorts of problems and did what they did, What's what's achievable and what's enough from his people? Because we heard from somebody last hour who said, whatever happens when this is done, Netanyahu will go because of the fact that this happened in the first place. Is that at the centre of his mind as well with this, as it, as it sort of transpires, my friend? Well, Jeremy, it, it, honestly, it's a great question. I think there's a couple of answers to it, one of which is what does tactical victory look like? Um, the military have been tasked with going into Gaza and trying to solve the Hamas problem. Um, it, uh, bluntly, that's an almost, it sounds a great soundbite, but it's it's very, very difficult for the military to do. But I guess tactical victory on the ground will be taking control of Gaza and then extracting um, themselves, having handed it back to the Palestinian authorities. The trouble is, you can just imagine the very next day, some Hamas soldiers will, fighters will literally throw a load of rockets across the border. Strategic success, though, is a very, very different subject. Um, the longer this goes on, uh, the more that Prime Minister Netanyahu loses the support of the international community. Already we're seeing you know, Israelis claim that 1,400 uh, lives were lost on that fateful day. Already we, we can't know the truth, but the mass controlled Gaza Health Authority claim that the figures are heading north of 8,000 now, and that fit of Palestinians. And that means that almost certainly the figures will continue to rise. What is a proportionate response? And, in, and if you actually look at this from a grand strategic perspective, Hamas is the problem, but almost certainly the dark shadow of Iran funds Hezbollah and uh, Hamas is almost certainly to, involved and responsible probably for inciting this violence. And therefore that, that from my military perspective, really, really eyes me because it makes it this whole situation almost certainly happening as a proxy to a third party. All this, all this pain, all this suffering is just not necessary. It's a political solution, not a military one. So bluntly, very difficult to see how either side wins despite the tactical situation on the ground. And Sean, over the weekend, we saw a, communi a, a communications blackout uh, throughout Gaza, people unable to use their mobile phones or access the internet. It, has that been seen before in a conflict of this scale? And what are the ethics around that? We've seen some, con you know, people saying it's quite a controversial tactic because obviously on one hand, they're trying to um, 
stop Hamas being able to communicate with each other. But as on the other side of things, there are people who cannot now call for ambulances or call for help from a civilian point of view. Well, well, Nicola, the, uh, bluntly, war is a horrible thing. And um, the way that tactics are used has all sorts of implications for the civilian population. There's no nice answer around this. I think the point from a military perspective is that um, the Hamas raid on the 7th of October was clearly very well planned. And Hamas would have known that they provoked the bear, that there would be a massive retribution. And therefore, they would have had years, decades to prepare for this, potentially bringing in some specialist weapons from Iran. Therefore, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, have to walk really carefully. And they've had to probe Hamas's defenses, find out what their capability is. And one of the things, like uh, shutting down the mobile network, it forces Hamas to use alternative communication systems. And that, of course, allows those to be intercepted and to be tracked. And it's all part, um, who knows whether it was actually what the Israelis did from a military perspective, but it's a classic military ruse to try to risk mitigate. And we're going to see a lot of those sorts of things happening because the military, whilst they are concerned for the civilian casualties, they have been instructed to, to carry out a military task which they believe is going to help defend Israel. And they will do everything in their power to do that, whilst also being mindful of doing that within the rules of armed conflict. I, th I, think, I think that's the point. And, Nick, this isn't... A, I don't mean this badly, but you, when people talk to me about the ethics, war is horrible, war is dirty. It's uh, The ethics of cutting off communications or beheading babies, the ethics of all war but there are, are dreadful. But, but there are rules of war. Yeah, precisely. And just, and I just that, wanted to clarify no, no, and, that and, and I something. think there's the point, Sean. Nick makes it really well. The international community, you said it yourself three weeks ago, absolute outrage. Now, countries naturally saying, where does this end? I mean, I asked you what a, a victory looks like. I would suggest, and I could be wider than Mark, that if you're correct with the, the wider support from Iran and beyond, is it possible to eradicate Hamas or will it just, will splinter groups grow and, and pop up other el elsewhere is it a, I, I, honestly mate it, it's we were talking about this last week you can only report what's happening can't you sean there's no other way of doing this there isn't um, and the problem with um saying you'll eliminate hamas you know hamas is a, is an ideal it's an idea it's hamas. a and, and of course, if you look at the devastating uh, history around the people of uh, the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip, without getting into the politi politics of it, inflation, you know, sorry, unemployment runs at about 50%. The, the, um, the, 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 their values, their, their, their amount of money flowing through the economy has virtually halved over the last few years. That creates unrest. And therefore, Hamas, whilst um, it, for us, it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a bunch of fighters that have uh, no morals or scruples. For some of the Palestinians, it's their only hope. And every one of those Hamas fighters that dies, the risk is that creates another 10 followers who then uh, sign up to the cause. And th there is no military solution to these sorts of problems. Um, and the problem is... As a former military guy, when we were going to go to Afghanistan and Iraq, we would hold our political masters to account to make sure they had done everything possible, whether it's negotiation, compromise, discussions, before you use military force. Because military force comes with it, a whole bunch of horrors, not only for the armies involved, but also for the civilian population. Are we confident every possible political angle has been explored? I think the answer to that is pretty clear. Sean Bell, thank you Thanks, so pal. much for joining us this morning and for breaking it down. He just makes sense to yeah, me. Absolutely. Good to have you on, Shawnee. Thank you so much indeed.